Assalamualaikum and hi So in this video, we are going to enter a new chapter, chapter 10 Wave properties of particles So we are going to look at subtopic 10.1 The De Broglie Wavelength We have two learning objectives in this subtopic To state the wave particles duality And to use the De Broglie Wavelength Lambda is equals to H over P Okay, what is wave particle duality? French physicist Louis de Broglie suggested that a particle beside exhibiting particles property which is having mass and momentum may under different conditions exhibit wave properties such as having wavelength, showing diffraction and also interference but we cannot observe both the expect of its behavior simultaneously so basically apa yang de Broglie ini cakap adalah selain daripada particles act as a particles iaitu mempunyai mass dan juga momentum at some condition dia boleh juga jadi wave ok so particle kita akan act as a wave juga selain daripada dia menjadi particle itself so maksud dia menjadi wave adalah dia akan ada wavelength dia boleh diffract dan juga boleh undergo interference however both these properties iaitu particles dan juga wave cannot act simultaneously de Broglie relation states that the wavelength associated with the particles momentum p is lambda is equals to h over p di mana lambda here shows the wave property and momentum here shows the particle property Okay, so basically kita nak relate dua ni and H here is a Planck constant. Okay, so lambda ini is known as the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, lambda yang kita ada iaitu H over P ini is known as de Broglie wavelength where we are trying to associate the wavelength with the momentum. In the de Broglie relation, lambda represent the wave property and the momentum P represent the particle property. Hence, the expression illustrate the wave particles duality A particles having both the properties of the particles and wave. Okay, so wave particle duality ini can be observed using this de Broglie wavelength equation iaitu lambda ini represent the wave property and momentum ini represent the particle property where kita punya particle is going to have both the particles and wave properties okay going to look at subtopic 10.2 electron diffraction from chapter 10 wave properties of a particle so there are three learning objective in this subtopic is to the first one is to describe the observation of electron diffraction in davison germer experiment to explain the wave behavior of the electron in an electron microscope and to state the advantages of the electron microscope compared to the optical microscope. So first here we are going to look at the electron's diffraction in davison germer experiment. Okay, so in 1927, they were studying about the electron scattering from the surface of a metal. So this Davison and Germer designed and built a vacuum apparatus to observe the scattering of the electron from the metal surface. So their vacuum apparatus is basically consists of a cathode anode so this is the cathode part here and we have anode here okay and then we have graphite film in front of the anode sorry in front of the anode and then we have screen where the electron diffraction pattern will be observed so basically this graphite film is used as a target kita akan ada a beam of electron in the cathode ray tube which is going to be accelerated by the applied voltage towards the graphite film so electron akan masuk daripada cathode ini and then the beam of the electron is diffracted after passing through the graphite film so dia akan mula 
diffract. These are all the electron diffraction. So this diffraction pattern is observed on the fluorescent screen here. Okay. Based on this experiment, the observation are a fast beam of fast moving particles, which is the electron, behave as a wave. This is because it is exhibiting the diffraction, which is the wave property. So basically, electron yang datang ini, particles yang masuk ini, akan behave as a wave sebab dia boleh undergo diffraction. Okay, diffraction dekat sini adalah wave property. Okay, so we can make a conclusion. Our particle is behaving as a wave. And then, Davison and Germer discovered that if the velocity of the electron is increased, okay, so maksudnya velocity di mana electron ini semua akan masuk di tambah, maksudnya increase dia, the ring are seen to become narrower. The ring here is the ring of the diffraction pattern. Dia menjadi lebih narrow. They are closer to each other. Showing that the wavelength of the electron decrease with increasing velocity as predicted by the de Broglie relationship. Okay, how does the increase in the velocity akan decrease the lambda of the electron dekat sini? We have equation based on the de Broglie relationship which is lambda is equals to Planck constant divided with the momentum. Momentum here is given as mass times velocity. So now, if we substitute the mv into this equation, we will end up with the de Broglie wavelength is equals to h over mass times velocity. So when the velocity of the electron increase, the wavelength is going to decrease. That is the reason why when the electron with greater velocity is accelerated, the ring here is going to become so much narrower. The pattern was observed to be similar to the diffraction pattern obtained when the X-ray wave was passed through the crystal atom. This established the facts of electron have wave life properties. Electron have wave like properties. Okay, disebabkan this pattern is observed, kita boleh buat conclusion that this pattern indicate electron is being diffracted. So, bila dia diffracted, dia behave as a wave dekat sini. Therefore, electron kita adalah particle sebenarnya. So, the particle is acting as a wave here sebab dia boleh diffract. Okay, the velocity of the electrons can be determined from the accelerating voltage which is the voltage between the anode and also cathode. Okay, voltage antara anode dan cathode ini kita panggil accelerating voltage di mana voltage ini is what leads the electrons to moves from the cathode to the anode here. So, kita nak cari apa kelajuan elektron kita bergerak. So, we are going to start with the equation where we are equating the potential energy with the kinetic energy. Potential energy is electron charge multiplied with the volt which is EV. And kinetic energy is the basic equation half mv square. And then we rearrange this equation such that since we are going to find the velocity, make the velocity as the subject. Okay, so EV and then we are going to divide with 1 over 2 becomes 2 over 1. So it becomes 2 EV equals to MV square and then bring the M here now so we'll end up with 2 EV divided with M is equals to V square therefore the velocity here is equals to square root of 2 electron volt divided by the mass of the electron so this is the velocity at which the electron is accelerated from the cathode to the anode Okay, so now we are going to substitute the velocity here into the de Broglie relation. So de Broglie, we have lambda is equals to h over p, where p is equals to mv. And we are going to substitute the velocity that we have obtained here. 
by equating the energies here into the de Broglie wavelength. So we'll end up with M. Our V here is 2EV over M. And then simplify this part. We'll end up with H over square root 2M EV. So our de Broglie wavelength is also equals to the Planck constant divided by the square root of 2 multiplied with the mass of the electron multiply with the electron volt here. Okay, next we are going to look at the electron microscope. Okay, so basically this is our electron microscope where we are going to have potential here, condensing lens and then objective lens is where you're going to place the object and the projection lens, the eyepiece and also the screen where the image will be formed. Okay, so at the near the supply here, we are going to have source of electron entering and then focusing on the object and then to diffract and form the image on the screen. So all this electron is going to come and fall on the object and undergo diffraction to produce the image. Basically, lah, secara roughly, this is the process. So a practical device that relies on the wave properties of an electron is electron microscope. It is similar to optical compound microscope in many aspects. So electron microscope lebih kurang sama dengan optical microscope. However, we have advantage of the electron microscope here over to the optical microscope such that the resolving power of the electron microscope is so much higher than the optical microscope. Maksudnya dia boleh resolve object yang sekecil, kecil, kecil lagi compared to the optical microscope. Okay, this is because the electron that is coming here into the condensing lens ini can be accelerated to a very high kinetic energy which is 10 to the power 5 here giving them a very short wavelength typically 100 times shorter than those of the visible light okay we can have high resolving power for the electron microscope because the electron yang kita ada ini can be accelerated to a very high kinetic energy Okay, when they have high kinetic energy, they will be have, they will be having hundred times shorter wavelength. Okay, so therefore the diffraction effect of the electron as a wave is much less than of the light. So bila dia ada lambda yang kecil, dekat diffraction sini dia akan form the image with so much of clarity here. As a result. Electron microscope are able to distinguish details about 100 times smaller. Okay, so sekecil-kecil uh, object itu, details itu can be observed by using electron microscope by the process of diffraction of electron here. In operation, a beam of electron falls on the thin slice of the sample. The sample ataupun specimen to be examined must be very thin, a few micrometers to minimize the effects such as absorption or scattering of the electron. So specimen yang kita guna ini, they must be very very thin in order to uh, minimize the absorption ataupun scattering of the electron. Kita takut specimen kita ini akan absorb the electron ataupun scatter the electron lah. So kalau dia buat begitu, diffraction tidak dapat berlaku dekat sini. The electron beam is controlled by the electrostatic or magnetic lenses to focus the beam to an image. The image is formed on the fluorescent screen. Okay, so basically ini adalah how the process of electron is going to diffract. Okay, electron is going to diffract on the object here and then form the image. Okay, so wave behavior of electron in electron microscope. So we are going to see how does this particle electron kita akan exhibit wave behavior in an electron microscope. In the electron microscope, 
electron are produced by the electron gun. Okay, so electron yang kita dapat dekat sini, dia datang daripada electron gun. Electron here are accelerated by voltage on the order of 10 to the power 5 volt having wavelength on the order of 0.04 nanometer. So, maksudnya, dia akan being accelerated to a voltage which is very very high dan juga dia punya wavelength akan jadi very very small 0.004 nanometer and these electrons are deflected by the magnetic lens to form a parallel beam which is then incident on the object. Okay, so dia akan fall on the object dekat sini. All this electron will be deflected by the magnetic lens kita and then dia akan form a parallel beam which is then incident on the object. The magnetic lens is actually magnetic field that exert forces on the electron to bring them to a focus. The field are produced by carefully designed current carrying coil in the wire. So, ini dia relate dengan chapter 4 sikit lah. Alright. So, basically, these are all this wave behavior of an electron in electron microscope. Sebab dia akan undergo diffraction dekat sini. As simple as that. So, untuk electron gun ini, the important thing here, sorry, for electron microscopes ini, the important thing here is you must know the advantage dia. Iaitu, the resolving power is so much bigger. Okay. Kenapa? Because electron can be accelerated to a very high kinetic energy and giving a very short wavelength. Okay, therefore, therefore, as a result, electron microscope ini able to distinguish details which are very, very small. Itu sangat-sangat penting untuk un ex uh, explain ataupun to talk about that electron microscope. Because our learning objective here, dia cakap state the advantages of the electron microscope compared to optical microscope. Alright, that's it for chapter 10.